welcome along to Off the Court Does the Nations Cup. Think of us like the dessert after the main course. Tamsin Greenway being the hot sauce on the waffle. <laughs> um, I don't know whether you want to be described like that. Because, surely, you don't have a hot dessert with a cold, like, ice cream, do you? Are you definitely hot and hot? No, ice cream and custard can't go wrong. It's a northern uh, thing. But then it melts. Inst- All right, okay. All right, we won't go there. I mean, we will a little bit later. Uh, Coming up, the team player and player of the weekend from the first weekend in Wembley. A weekend that saw England beat Uganda, but lose to Australia. Uganda ultimately lose twice, but run both England and New Zealand close. And Australia hmm, winning twice. The table then looks a little bit like you may have expected. Australia top in that final. Um, They'll play the winner of England or New Zealand for that final place. Loser of that one then faces Uganda for third or fourth. But like a a tease at the end of a very good soap, we'll get to that in a bit. Overall, Tamsin, did Wembley deliver? Wembley absolutely delivered. It was electric in there. Atmosphere-wise, being in a big arena, being at such an iconic venue, it was really, really special. And the games delivered. Honestly, um, every team that won scored over 60 goals. That that's unheard of at international level. It just shows what an attacking weekend of netball it was. And for the fans and the excitement and the buzz around the game, that's what you've come to see, right? You want to see that. On the flip side, you're kind of going, how the team's defending at the moment. And that is something we can get on and, and talk about later. But I just think the whole hype around it, how close the games were, the pinnacle at the, at the end of the weekend with England not playing Australia did not disappoint at all. Um, and just the rise and rise and rise again of Uganda. I would have thought the way you used to defend, you would have loved the fact. <laughs> that it was hey, it would have been about 90. Goals, goals, goals. 90 goals. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> and that was if you were on my shoulder still on there as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, before we talk about your, your picks of the weekend, we're going to start by summing up England. So that, that tight match against Uganda on Saturday and 23 changes. I thought 23 changes was going to be trending at one point. And then ahead of... Australia at three quarter time and then they ultimately lose if we have a little th- uh, flick even through the Nations Cup hashtag post Uganda Megan says too many changes today but hopefully they've learned that now and realize that the combinations don't work I know we get frustrated at lack of changes but bibs in the air is just as bad hoping for purposeful changes ahead of tomorrow she was talking ahead of the Australia match then post Australia we get sort of the reverse of that about England being brave, about sticking to the combinations and about the ones that work. So was it a story this weekend of, of two different Englands? Yeah, absolutely. And look, this is not just about England. This goes across the board as well. You know, when New Zealand started without their strongest lineup on and Maddie Gordon was off the court, their best centre, they struggled as well. And you just look at the difference between them in the first half to the second half. So it's never just against England, but England are renowned for making excessive changes I would say and in that first game against Uganda it was excessive um they changed across every position as well which is you know I I get that you're trying to rest legs a little bit and we got away with it we got the win in the end but it was really close um Uganda took the third quarter It, it was you know there was one goal in it going into the last quarter the flip side of that is it's making a team full of players that understand how to perform under pressure but you're relying every time that they step onto the court to be absolutely faultless. And and that can't continue. You can't always have that. And we've seen the downfalls of that. We saw it, you know, it, it, it happened at the World Cup when they have the perfect performance. Brilliant. But when it doesn't, it doesn't all come together. I am for a little bit more consistency. Brave on the change, but for purpose. Why are you bringing somebody on? What's the changes? How long are you letting someone out there to go and, and give it a shot? And I think what happened against Australia is players grew. Imogen Allison, best I've seen us at centre internationally so far through her career. It was brilliant. Um, and her injection into the M30, you saw her grow with confidence. The feeds 30 feet into the circle. Same with Raj Kwashi for different reasons. She's just come back. So, you know, she's come stepped back onto the international stage. She got 30 minutes against Uganda. She nearly played out the full 60 against um, Aussie, bar the cramp at the end. So that's the kind of reasons you need to, because in the second half, she came out in that third quarter, got three games off Sobe Gar- Garbin, who had been completely owning her in the first half. So it's things like that. That doesn't mean if someone's not playing well, change it. That doesn't mean you don't tactically respond. But it definitely helped the England side this weekend. And it made for such great entertainment. And that's what we want. We want the fans on this journey with us too. 
Can I take you back to when you were like 17 and you first passed your test, your driving test, right? And you're driving to that nightclub. I don't know what it was near you. I mean, clearly you're 17, so it was one only for over 16 year olds, right? And you're getting there and parked outside your house are two Fiat Pandas, if that was a car. Like imagine a really old basic car parked right outside your house. One of them has got go faster stripes down the side. You press the horn and go, da -da 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 -da, <laughs> and flares come out the back. And the other one is just like a really regular beige. Now you're going to choose, if they're both going to get you to the same destination, you're going to go in the one that's super exciting, that everyone turns their heads, that people want to see as it goes along the street, right? So if the destination is the same, gold, at a World Cup. We want this brave, exciting England. Don't we? we don't want the old boring one on the right-hand side that won't get you noticed. Yeah, <laughs> I love where this was going. I absolutely <laughs> love where this was going. You took me right back to my youth, Caroline Barker. And of course, I'd have been windows down, in the fancy cars, singing at the top of my voice, <laughs> making an entrance. I get it. And absolutely, we want to be brave. But the braveness for me comes from the impact. And actually helping the players out too. You know, it, there's no surprises that if you give players a bit more time out there, they're going to settle and feel a bit more confident. We lived on the edge in that game. And actually, I think it's one of the best games we've ever played against Australia. We still didn't get quite over the line, but we challenged them. And actually, you know, Australia had the chance to go 10 goals up. They didn't. We took our opportunity and got back into the game. So I definitely want the brave, exciting, entertaining England. I think they can do that with the quality of player on the court. And I think they can do that with the impact. So, you know, as we're going along in our fancy flames out the back car, we whack on Fumi Fidoju just for a ride around the corner, drop her off a little bit later. But it's it's those kind of impactful changes that I want to keep seeing. And I think that is definitely um, one, of, one of the reasons they perform so well against Australia. <laughs> Fidoju, for me is never a passenger she's always the driver <laughs> right first in that car she's bagging that front seat right carol says i'm not sold on the raz fran combo i am however a fan of people in their correct positions and minimal changes me too hopeful um get to replay australia next week and take the win i'm a fan i'm not allowed an opinion but i'm a fan of the raz fran combo are you absolutely and a lot you have to understand internationally it you know, if teams like Australia can leave someone like Amy Parmenter out of squads, you, you have to understand the, the impact. You've got to play a style and players have to fit into that style. So if you want Fumi to be the starting goal defence or the starting wing defence, she's got to fit within the unit. And actually what you're getting from Fran at the moment is uh, you notice her when she's not on the court. You, you absolutely do. She leads that team. She is full of structure. She reads the game exceptionally well. She comes up with the, with the plays and the big moments consistently, right? Fumi absolutely needs a place in that squad. Where that sits at the moment, I'm not quite sure, and that's for the England, um, the England coaches to decide. You, the problem you've, you've got is she is fast becoming an impact player and not a starter grinder down for 60 minutes, which is what a Fran is. Raz will only get better. You've got to give the kid a shot. She's just literally come back, and, and you know, in an hour and a half, she, she ended up doing some pretty spectacular stuff. She's going to be a better physical shape within the next 12 months. Because remember, this is, this is a kid that hasn't played netball regularly for like two years. You've yeah. got to give her a longs back and get her on court and understand the footwork and the movement. She's only going to get better. Um, and actually, it was the understanding between Raz and Fran that I really, really liked. I, I genuinely think that would be a solid combination. Does the team have room for Fumi? Yes, but they've got to decide where. Because, you know, you want to whack up wing defence, you drop in Amy Carter now. Is image in the long-term centre? So we've still got questions, as we always have. Um, but I think don't underestimate what impact players can do against different nations. And that's what I want to see from England, some consistency with speckles of in impact rather than the, oh, change, 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 which is what we saw on the Saturday. If you have a question, use hashtag off the court or perhaps if you want to sponsor us with a Fiat Panda, get in touch. <laughs> right, let's talk game of the weekend because you've picked England 59, Australia 61 as your game of the weekend. Before your take, Tamsin, here are the coaches. There's so much for us to work with in that game. Like It really hurts, actually, because we know we're capable of a lot of what you've seen today, I think. That's equal, to, in, in my view, that's equal a performance as when we beat them in the summer, if not better. 
um, in terms of just those moments of just brilliance. But we really let ourselves down. I feel like we've gifted that game to them a little bit because our errors were really poor. Um, missed shots, really uncharacteristic for us. Um, so in those small moments, I feel like we've really let ourselves down. But um, I loved the fight. You know, like we did, it. obviously it blew out a little bit at the front of the game. I actually still thought we were doing some great stuff. Um, but yeah, I think brilliant that we found more turnover today against an Australian side because we know how hard that is. And we rewarded most of that. But yeah, just moments, missed shots, a few passing errors. And those are the things we've really just got to keep working at getting rid of out of our game. You go into your first international test against Uganda next week. What's going to be the focus this week when you've got a little bit of downtime? Oh, I think it's training, like that's the exciting part. You actually can take an experience, do a bit of training, learn from it and then go and apply something else. And Uganda's showing some incredible skill out there. Um, it's going to be a really tough battle. That's a completely different style for us. And, and it's a moment. Australia's never played Uganda. So we're really going to embrace that first and foremost. There was a lot of love for Jess Thirlby's post-match interview talking about, yeah, we want to win it. That, that change in, in language. Yes, saying in parts gifted it to them small moments let themselves down but but actually that England played as well if not better than when they beat Australia at the World Cup you agree with that yeah absolutely and oh it was so refreshing to hear her say that and that's the passion we want we want to hear her say we want to win stuff and we want to go and do it because why wouldn't you when you've got all that talent in the squad and actually probably gives a breath of fresh air to the players as well with that confidence that's going, yeah, okay, we're allowed to talk about it now. You know, we're not in hiding on this. This is us. This is what we're going to do. And this is how we're going to do it. For Australia, a sense of the wobbles at times? Well, you say wobbles, right. I love Stacey Marie Fitch. I think she's she's a brilliant coach and she has, um, she's implemented bleeding players through at the right time. Like Sophie Dwyer kind of eyes rolled a little bit. Was she ready for it? In that first half, some of the netball I saw Australia play was the best ever attacking. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get a bit, ugh, fall asleep watching Australia. Not this weekend. They were brilliant. And I mean that in, in the least disrespectful way ever because they win everything. But they're very textbook. Not this yeah. weekend. They're one and three seconds they use in circle, the way they pulled up England's box defence. They were comfortable. Nine up in, in that sort of second quarter, looking all gears. But... But, but, but they did have a wobble and England are fast becoming their nemesis side, the side that they don't put to bed. You know, any other team nine down against Australia usually fade away, not England. And Australia gave them a sniff and it was really their own silly errors that gave us a sniff and England just put their foot down. And what was great then after this, after the break at half time, England came out and just went, this is how we're going to play. And, and I think the crowd and some of the plays of that third quarter, it just lifted everybody. I think what was impressive, and you cannot take this away from Australia, is that the players that re-entered the game, so like Keir Austin coming on after an average performance on Saturday, 12 out of 12, nailed it. Cara Conan, like, can we give some credit to how, how she stepped onto the court? And they were under all kinds of pressure. And Paige Hadley, I loved her interview. If you haven't listened to it, listen to the it's an interview post-match because um, she, again, speaks very un -Aussie. Like, she was really um, open about it all and said, like, how the crowd had sort of played into, you know, it was like, whoa, we weren't kind of expecting this. And it was, it was, really, it was really lovely to hear her speak about it. Um, so, yeah, I, I just thought they definitely have got, got the wobbles, but they saw it through. And I think you've got to give credit to Stacey Marinkovic's changes on that and a bit, of, um, a bit of composure that they found that they perhaps didn't have at the World Cup when they played as that first time and lost in the rounds. Alex asks, apart from having a higher shooting percentage, what else could England do to beat Australia going forward? 20 seconds, go. Well, it'd help not going nine goals down. You, you've got to look at your starts against them now and you've got to look at where we are losing some ball. I mean, that was about three and a half seconds. But solutions. Do you need done. more? Well done, in Greenway. <laughs> no, fine. So that was your game of the weekend. Play of the weekend doesn't just belong to you. It belongs to everyone on social media. Um, let's recreate it to see if anyone can remember or knows what we're talking about. So you're what, I don't know, 50, 60 miles away from me right now, aren't you? Yeah. So let's recreate your player of the weekend. I just happen to have a piece of paper next to me. But imagine, if you will, I know it's a big leap, that I'm Fran Williams. And you are playing the role of Tamsin Greenway? Oh, Cardwell. And I'm just chilling in the circle at the minute because the ball is right down the other end of the court. No beef going on between you and any of that Australia defensive end. Just None of that whatsoever. This. So here's me 
Fran Williams about 60 miles away. I've got the ball and I'm just, I'm just going to throw it in the air. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Has he come down yet? Got it. Oh, that was textbook. That was like, we were there watching it all over again. Oh, you set fireworks off behind you. How have you done that? I don't even know. I don't even know if I could do that again. <laughs> what happened? That was perfect. <laughs> I don't know what you did, but that is exactly what happened to I Fred. Meant to say that. <laughs> um, oh, you're a genius. As was <laughs> that lob from Fran. <laughs> contain yourself what just happened um izzy on social says if anyone needs me i'll be watching this passage of play on repeat for the rest of the night explain what happened not then because technology just was well, amazing <laughs> but during that you moment. know you know what when i said about england being brave and i mean they were brave that ball had no right to land it came from it <laughs> from it like the just inside the middle third it was insane from fran williams by the way he was great on the ball I mean, brave, that is just like insane to actually let that ball go and it, for it to land. And it just lifted the crowd. It was after a Razposhi turnover as well. We were getting right back on top of the Aussies. I had to rewatch the replay to see who threw it because we were all watching the other bits of play. And it was like, who, who the hell let that go? It, it was incredible. Think David Beckham halfway line-esque over the, over into, into the goals. It was very that. It was it was iconic and it was a moment. And it was a, a moment where I turned and looked at Jamie, my little girl, and just went, we're going to win this game. We, we play, we're going to play ball like that. We're going to win this game. She's still not forgiving me because she was adamant we were going to win after I told her that. But it just, it, it was beautiful. And that's what I said about um, it was the most attacking weekend of netball i've seen in a long time and oh long let it mate continue please like let's play with some flair and, and beauty about the game because that's what it's all about I, I mean i don't like the fact you just said think david beckham because people could just think what i just showed them the skills already to pay the bills. it was close, right you are watching did. off the court yeah thank you uh, does the nation's cup next team of the weekend which it has to be Uganda, right? Leading New Zealand at halftime, taking England the closest they have. Loads of comments on social about this. Chanel says, love seeing the hug at the end of the game between Knowles and Peace, the old coach player respect. Have been loving Uganda, so competitive, really taking it to the top teams. Only the last few minutes letting them down, but for 55 minutes, solid. Here's the thoughts of Uganda coach Fred Mugera after taking New Zealand right to the line. Fred, once again, not the result that you wanted, but my goodness, what a performance from your team. The way they exposed some of the weaknesses, perhaps, in that Silver Fern side was really impressive. What are you happy about with that performance? Yeah, the performance was good because we wanted that game very much. That was our strategy that we wanted to beat these people because we have played them uh, several times and uh, all the time they were beating us, 10 and above. But this time around, we came out and wanted to beat them which we had done, in fact, uh, the first 30 minutes. But again, we started making some silly, silly mistakes, which let them come back into the game. Does that come down to maybe a little bit of fitness, a little bit of tiredness later on in these games? No, not tiredness as such, because we trained, we prepared ourselves, but I think it was the mentality of the players on court, that uh, at a certain time they could not heed to instructions. And uh, they were trying to make those balls that we, at least we told them not to, to do, and in fact, those are the balls that these guys, uh, the New Zealanders, they intercepted and they scored those goals. Two really good performances from your team here this weekend. What can you take into your first international meeting with Australia next week? Yeah, that's the match we want also to show them what we have shown these other two countries. And uh, I think uh, it will be better because we are going to rectify on the mistake we did yesterday and today. Probably that one of uh, next week will be better than these ones. Look, very well played. Thank you very much, Fred. You're welcome, yeah. Talk to me about Uganda. Amazing. Oh, they were so good. You know what? This has been the beauty about when, when the quad series first came around, because obviously we've seen South Africa in there and the improvement over those of the years. And actually, you know, go back to when I was playing for England, we needed opportunities against Australia and New Zealand to close the gap. Opening up the Nations Cup and bringing Uganda in was a genius move. So whoever did that, well done. It, it's needed to happen for World Netball. Um, and I said that they're not just here to make up the numbers. And you know what? I probably, I, I, 
owe them a massive apology because I keep talking about their different style of play. It's actually not different. It's just their style. It's just we're so used to watching how the Aussies play, how the Kiwis play, how the English play, how the Jamaicans have started playing. And then Uganda come through with their own style and we go, oh, it's so different. It's so confusing to everyone. No, it's just awesome. Like, it's literally awesome. The way they've got Mary Chollock playing out of the circle, the way they keep possession but are fit enough to do it. Do you know how hard that is? And to take a quarter off New Zealand, to be up at half time, to do the same with England and to run them so close, be only one down going into the final quarter. Um, for some of their other star players, Kodondi, I mean, this this girl's amazing. She came on, she she had, um, I think it was something like six games across the weekend, went to two of the best attacking units in the world. Um, and yeah, they're only going to get better. They are only going to get better with these opportunities and the understanding of the game. What I love about Fred as well, he gives nothing away. You go, Fred, how, how, what are you going to do? And he goes, oh, I'm just going to score more goals score more. and let, let him. I'm like, brilliant. Yeah. Love, love it. Love I love them. Fred t-shirts on the way, on the way. Uh, you mentioned a number of players there. So let's quickly do player of the weekend. Mine is Kato Avaiti for saying fitney soonness a lot. Um, but also <laughs> Raz Kwashi back on court, just growing, as you said, the way that she improved over that weekend phenomenal phenomenal talent you which players are you going for yeah look there was individual standouts in key games there's watson in game one Paige hadley for me in game two um i think raz obviously imo i thought had a fantastic weekend across both games el carbo the same 43 out 46 getting bruce dragged off the court so there's loads uganda was mary and could dondi i think it it showed for me the Kiwis, when they don't have Maddie Gordon on the court, but actually the, the one player that was solid across both games, did her job consistently, was Grayson Wecky. Um, and it's just how uh, she's not rattled. She scored 41 out of 42 in game one and 53 out of 54 in game two. And what I loved in that game against Uganda, and they're under the pump a bit, she actually, the one shot she missed was right in a pressure moment. She goes and gets a flipping intercept, just gets it back. Um, she's only going to get it better. There was yeah. so many players that stood out, but I think we have to give credit to her because that is no mean feat. Is she enough to carry New Zealand over against England for New Zealand to make that final? No, they're going to have to win more ball. They're going to have to absolutely win more ball. And actually having seen their mid-court and the missing Econazio, um, England's England's defence out the front has been, been superb. Um, Amy Carter has been outstanding. And I think they're going to really struggle with Fran Williams against Georgia Heffernan. I don't think they'll service Nweki enough. The only way they're going to do it is be brave, is they're just going to have to let loads of ball go and, and hope. But I, I just can't see them doing that enough. You've had loads of questions about New Zealand, actually, from the likes of Just Jay and Alex and Nick. Thoughts on New Zealand's second phase? I feel they're really struggling to get depth and having to do so much work to hit the circle. That's one of the questions. Uh, Just Jay says, do you have any info, thoughts on why Malasala hasn't played for New Zealand so far? Also, how, why are New Zealand not turning any defensive ball? A lot in there. Brief thoughts? Brief thoughts. The, the zone, they've got to adapt. You know, every team has adapted. Australia over the years have gone from a one-on-one -on -one style now to playing a box. It's been really effective this series. The amount of ball that Bruce has been able to come out and fly on. And I think they'll only get better with that. Um, England go between sort of one-on-one. -on -one. They have different styles of players. So Yufumi comes on, does something different to a Fran. So they're definitely adapting to their style. New Zealand at the minute are predictable with their zone. And I just don't think they have the quality of player they had in the past to consistently put that out there they're going to have to change and adapt that that's that's the first point what i did like is what they are trying to attack look when you you without Econazio, it's huge if you're going to play with grace and Wecky in the back and you want to keep her in the circle your three players out the front are just no one can go missing ever so i think there's two parts of that you either improve the, the game of those three or you start bringing Wecky out the circle and just look what happens when mary Chollock exits out the circle i'm not sure there is a game there's enough in anybody's game now to just stand in the circle. And, you know, whether Jamaica explore that with Jill Fowler before she retires, and I think everyone needs to take a look at Mary this weekend and go, yeah, we're probably going to have to start adding this into the game. Oh, there's so much I want to ask you from the questions we've had in on Instagram and on X as well. Plenty want to know where your sweatshirt was from that you wore on Sunday. I think many have discovered it already on Etsy. Uh, the whole world wants to know if Courtney Bruce meant it. I think that one's been backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. I'm saying she, she didn't. didn't. However, she didn't. it does come to another. No, she absolutely didn't. It does come to another question that we've had from Anne. Thoughts on how the new dangerous play suspension rules have played out 
so far. We had an incident, didn't we, in the England-Uganda match where Cardwell goes down, Uganda get a, a suspension. My only question around that is why it didn't happen first off. Maybe there was a, a little conversation about the new rules and she should have been sent straight away. But also, in that moment, if you've got a player go down and the concern is over dangerous play, I'd want to see someone come on and check that player, check their, all right, you know, a medical professional come on and check the player in that moment. If we're going to take the time to send someone, then we should take the time to check that those players are okay in that moment as well, would be my thoughts. How do you think the rules have played out? Yeah, absolutely agree. Look, it was nice to have some of the rules there. I thought the changes became seamless with the with the timeouts rather than, you know, the whole faking of stuff. Um, there was excitement around the shots going up as the whistle was going, so that was really cool as well. I think the suspension one's going to take a bit of time for people to get used to, and you're absolutely right. It, it's got to work both ways. And also, we've, we've got to there's got to be a better judgment of me of um, of what is dangerous and what's not. You know, netball is a highly contested game, um, and yeah, I think we I think we're just got to have some real clear clarity on it. But I I liked what we're trying to implicate, and and, and I think it, it matters. The game needed an update, and um, it's you just got to give the umpires and the teams time to adapt to that. Because remember, everyone's style is different, and we're so used to seeing certain key players and certain players play some ways. We're not used to seeing other players play the other way. And we, we've got to take that into account as well when we're umpiring, coaching and playing. But it is going to make players take some responsibility. You're going to have to pick and choose what ball you can go for. And, and I think that is needed in the game. And a reminder, this is the first time we're seeing it. We're not going to see it across the leagues until September. So it's consistency as well in the players seeing it, in the umpires seeing it. It's us the fans seeing it as well. And everyone just really seeing how this is going to play out. But it is about protecting the players, ultimately. Right, next weekend, day three on Saturday, the first direct arena in Leeds, Australia, Uganda, England, New Zealand, and day four, the finals. You're saying England-Australia final? Yeah, absolutely. I can't see England losing against New Zealand the way they played, uh, and Australia the same against Uganda, and what a matchup that will be. Woohoo! I don't know where you were this weekend if you weren't watching it, but if you weren't watching it, do watch next weekend. We've seen what Leeds can be like, and I know it's going to bring it again. And we have you covered across Sky Sports. We'll be back with the, the beef, with the hot sauce, with the cherry on top, driving our Fiat Pandas. You'll hear us coming around the corner and maybe, maybe an England win. For now, be brave, like Tamsin says, and buy a jumper or two and, and maybe a car. And if you are going, let Fumi drive. Sky Sports, feel it all.